how do we get to a point of a moratorium as far as processing applications as council member said has brought up it's, it's a very important conversation to be having with this community and it doesn't mean we're stopping building we can't stop what's been approved we're just a breather so that we can go through our process and figure out what works and what does not work so we don't just keep approving projects that end up costing us more more dollars down the road so I want to make sure we're, we are working on that yeah and that's kind that? of what I would and that's why I was trying to, to kind of sort of respond to Councilman Vizendez is, is that um, there is sort of an idea I don't know how legal the idea is, is but just um, obviously you know I don't like to use the word moratorium because the, the building or the maps that you have entitled pause, right now yeah. are moving forward but if there's another mechanism to on applications or something along those lines we were we we're trying to look on at okay. what, what's possible oh, yes, there. we need to have a conversation here the other part of growth one thing we're not doing is the affordable housing component of the new developments putting in the requirement which I think you know in the past it's been 15 percent I think we need to have a conversation about implementing a 20 percent affordable housing element to it if we can have that conversation and I think that that was another one of the, the council's goals about putting together an inclusionary housing ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's that's a, a much longer conversation, I think. What you're going <clears> to <throat> end up finding is, is it, are those houses actually resale uh, restricted or rental restricted? Um, and if they are, then you're monitoring those. I mean, it, it's or is, is, are you going to have an in-lieu fee? And what determines what size the project is? I mean, those are some huge discussions that you're going to end up going down. And, and I think those are at the same time. You, I think if I was ordering things in some sort of a, a priority, I would say if you want your growth management ordinance um, done and, and certified, and you want your inclusionary housing ordinance, and then your general plan, I think those are kind of that's kind of the order you want to try to get that at. Um, and then, but it, be prepared for long long meetings on those well, items. I, I've been prepared and the public's prepared. This is something you know I've been talking about for a few years now. So it's we need to have the conversation. Whether it passes or not, it needs to be had. The other uh, item, which some of the members here spoke about, our speaker over that weekend, one of the most important things I came away with with that goal and visioning setting was something that we're doing, and he pointed out, we're doing wrong here, and it's creating a major stress on our staff and our city, and it's going to cause us to fail. That is this idea of having that third meeting. As he pointed out, all you're doing is creating a situation where staff can't even catch up to implement what you discussed, so everybody starts falling behind. Now, I, I felt that way from the beginning on this. I think staff needs the time to do things right. We need the time to, to research and do the things we need to do on it. And I think it's a conversation we should be having because I don't think this third meeting really in the end of its helping us. If we need to put more time on one of our meetings, we can. We did it for several years before, and it's always seemed to work. So I think we should have that discussion again rather than continue down this path of the third meeting at the end of the month. And that's all I have. Okay, so 